debating Milo. I haven't heard anything about that lately. So the answer is no, I won't be debating Milo. The reason I won't be debating Milo is because he's a coward. And the reason he's a coward is because it's two weeks ago, three weeks ago, he, first of all, somebody, I think it was Dave Rubin, plus uh, Stephen Crowder, they both offered to host a debate between me and Milo on the alt-right and Donald Trump. And Milo went totally silent. And then he blamed Breitbart News for telling him not to do it. A couple weeks later, he then said, fine, I'm willing to do it now. And, I, and he emailed me and he emailed Dave Rubin. And he emailed you know, all the people involved, and he said, let's set this up. And within an hour, I had my assistant email back times, right? And he said, in, within the next couple of weeks, no response, nothing. Right? He says, I'll get back to you, no response, for a week, for two weeks, for three weeks, right? And then I email him again, you know, last a week and a half ago, and I said, okay, well, you know, I'm holding these dates open, and I'm not going to keep holding dates open, so are we doing this or not? No response. No response because he's chicken, because he's, because he's, he's chicken poop, because he is a coward. Coward, he's an intellectual coward. It's very easy to go on campus and fight against Trigglypuff social justice warriors with an IQ of seven. It's really not difficult. Gotcha, and it's also really not difficult to lie to college students about what is good and true because they haven't studied the issues. It's also not difficult to gain attention by doing silly stunts. And they're fun. I watch them. They're fun. But when you but when you do those things and you and you then spoon feed on top of it alt right white nationalism and pander to some of the worst people on earth and encourage college students to do the same. It's really terrible. I don't have to reiterate my criticisms of Milo here. Suffice this to say, he's intellectually shallow. The offer's off the table. I don't waste my time holding dates open for my intellectual inferiors who are too cowardly to debate me. To initiate conversations, then blame me for backing out of the debate that they back out of because they, because they have no stones. No, I'm gonna, you know, you want to what? No, it's, it's people ask me about this at Texas Tech. This is a very, you know, look, this is a very weird situation that happened, right? I didn't reply to an email for two weeks because I'm busy and I was doing stuff like this. Um, no, wait a minute, I'm not bullshitting you. I'm not bullshitting you. You know, I, I, I think my inbox has about 30,000 unread emails at the moment. Um, I didn't reply for two weeks, as I very often don't. And then I hear that Ben has published a video saying I'm a chicken and I won't debate him, which I never said. I just had, we hadn't fixed a date yet. Um, I wonder whether it's because he, did he decide he didn't want to do it in the end or whatever, but the, the invitation is open. Bring it, Ben. Um, an end to pointless... Well, maybe I'll, bring, maybe I'll bring Ben and Dave Rubin, and maybe we'll... Um, maybe we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So in different oh, like, like the Reddit's and the 4 chan yeah, like yeah, Reddit yeah. and 4chan. Because um, I feel like they kind of started almost like a political revolution online of um, getting rid of PC. But I just wanted to see what you thought about them. I mean, I think they're mostly losers who sit in their mother's basements <laughs> and smoke pot and masturbate. Um, <clears throat> you know, but uh, so I, I think that my, my, my biggest problem with, with, the, with this group of people is that there is a, again, I've spent my entire career fighting against political correctness, right? I'm the guy who goes to public high schools with under, with, 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 with poor kids and says to the poor kids, the reason your parents are permanently poor is because they're bad with money and made bad decisions. Don't make those decisions and you'll do better. Right? That's politically incorrect and that'll get you shut down by the high school principal, right? Which, which happened. It, that's, <laughs> right, that's, that's political incorrectness. It is not political incorrectness to shout cuck at people. Right? You're not actually changing anything. I'm sorry, just shouting cuck at people doesn't make the world a better place. It just means that you're an asshole. Yeah. So, it's, so, the, so the idea that... It, it, so, you know, my, my big problem with this is that there's a whole generation of young people who are falling into the trap of thinking they're principled by saying stupid things. And not just saying stupid things, because right? cuck is just a silly thing, but, but people who are using the N-word in chat rooms because they think, oh, I'm violating some sort of societal taboo and that makes me cool. Yeah, well, that's not going to be so cool when it turns out your employer can search you. Yeah. And now you can't get a job. Right? It's not going to be so cool when you fall into this trap of associating with all, with all these folks and it turns out that it's on your Facebook page. It's all fun and games until you actually have to live in the real society where the left is, is willing to go after people. Now, I don't think the left should go after people for this sort of stuff because I would prefer to live in a society where we can all say whatever we want, but I don't think that you saying these things promotes that because I don't think it's important that we have a society where you say the N-word. I think it is important that you have a society where you can point out that we're not disproportionately sending black people to prison. We're sending black people to prison in precisely the proportions they're committing crimes. I think that's more important than you shouting cuck or the N-word. Right? And this is, this, is my, this is my big problem with, uh, you know, as, as you know, I have this long-running debate now with Milo Yiannopoulos. This is my big problem with Milo and his entire movement, is I think that Milo is not conservative. I don't think he knows anything about conservatism. I don't think he cares about the Constitution. He says this openly. I think that Milo cares about being a provocateur. And I'm sorry, a provocateur generation 
is only valuable in, in standing for things that are worthwhile. It is not, it, being a provocateur just for the sake of being a provocateur is worthless. Provoke in the name of something real and decent, and then I'll stand with you. Provoke in the name of just being a provocateur because you're violating taboos and you're a waste of my time. Thank you. Strongly by banning people. And so, you know, and, and let me say for the record that as anybody who has watched me for the past year knows, I am no fan of Milo's. I have not been a fan of Milo's. I find Milo appalling, and I have for well over a year. I've stayed silent on this latest stuff because, honestly, you don't kick a guy while he's down. But the fact is that it's, it, but, you know, Milo, it, it's, what, what's happened with Milo actually says less about Milo than it does about the conservative movement that I find troubling, right? It, it, like, I think that just to give you a few examples of stuff that Milo's done over the past year, in, in a few weeks ago, he suggested to a Muslim girl in an audience that she shouldn't be wearing a hijab in America. As a guy who wears a funny hat every day of the, every day of the week, I think that's awful, right? Milo's somebody who said that, he, he called a, a Jewish journalist from BuzzFeed a, a thick as, a, what was it? It was a typical example of a sort of thick as pig shit media Jew. Right? Milo, is, Milo, on the day of my child's birth, sent me a, a meme of a, of a black baby suggesting my kid was half black because I'm a cuck, because I'm not sufficiently supportive of Donald Trump. And he's talked about how the alt-right is this wondrous, this wondrous milieu of intellectual decency and honesty full of brilliant people while openly acknowledging that the alt-right actually says that Western civilization and ethnicity uh, are, are inherently connected, right? He did all of this before all this stuff came down. So my only disappointment on all of this stuff is that, you know, I, I think that conservatives should have said this is all bad stuff a long time ago. I don't think that they, it should have taken tape of Yiannopoulos saying that 30-year-olds having sex with 13-year-olds is, is great in order, for, in order for people to say this was not great stuff. So if the only standard on the right is, well, we're, like, we'll accept anyone who pisses off the left, our only standard is you can't say that it's good for 30-year-olds to have sex with 13-year-olds, I think we can have a little bit higher standards. Thank you. Hi, hello. Hello. Um, I was wondering, my name is Ariza, by the way. Um, as a fellow European, I was asking, don't you think that there's a better way to establish democracy? Like, do you really think that America is the best democracy that we've ever had? Uh, in the history of human civilization, yes. But something like, I don't know, like Scandinavian countries, maybe. Don't you think that they have better type of democracy than Yeah, people sometimes say this, um, and I think that the, I mean, Norway, for instance, you know, it doesn't really have an economy because there's so many, so, so, such abundant natural resources, um, it doesn't make much sense to, to praise them in, in economic terms. Um, but these countries are socialist. These are countries where there are higher property taxes for houses that have sea views. These are countries that control every aspect of your life and will excise you from, uh, from public service and from the public square if you don't subscribe to a, um, to a narrow set of allowable opinions. The reason Sweden, which is often held up as, a, as an example of you know, good governance in a well-ordered country, as I think your, your question was suggesting. I mean, it is only a democracy just about, vaguely. It is technically a democracy. But in Sweden, the reason this country's got itself into so much trouble, the reason Sweden has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, of immigrants that it cannot cope with, is the stultifying political correctness that takes hold in socialist countries. And the fact that if you are a Swede, and you, until very, very recently, and even now if, you're, you know, if you work in the arts or anywhere, if you even broached the subject of immigration, you would be um, castigated as a racist, fired from your job, and cast out of polite society. It's difficult for me, hearing people praise these supposedly wonderful Scandinavian nations, to look out on them and to look at the narrow range of acceptable opinions when you compare it to somewhere like America and praise them in any way whatsoever. So I have to tell you no. Um, I, I can't think of a better example than America of a country that is still, by and large, pretty free. Um, Scandinavia is, is in a real mess, um, and it's in a, in a real mess precisely because um, it has not its voters haven't voted for freedom, they voted for stultifying uh, control from their, from their governments. Um, there was probably a, a, little, a little while when Scandinavian countries were, were, were doing okay, uh, but they're not anymore. And America, by and large, is still all right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening, Milo. Hi. One of your many appealing qualities is how <laughs> Do go on. 
is how incredibly researched you all are in all of your viewpoints, how you back up everything you say with facts and studies. I try. There are, There's a butt coming, isn't there? Can you hear it? No, there, there are many figures that do have contrasting viewpoints that you do. Sam Harris, John Oliver, yeah. a vertically challenged man named Ben Shapiro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my question is, <laughs> what current political figures or other advocates out there that do have contrasting viewpoints from you that you respect as being credible? Well, the problem is there aren't very many clever lefties left, you know? Um, they've sort of forgotten how to argue over the last 30 years. I mean, it's, you know, it's difficult. One of the reasons there's so much political tension in this country is people talk past each other. The right tends to talk with reason, logic, facts, and history, and the left tends to talk with feelings, grievance, and victimhood. These are different languages. It's like trying to dance about architecture. I mean, it's like, mm. um, You know, I, I, there's, there's, there's so little that these, these people have in common um, that it's very difficult to sort of say, well, I, I mean, I, I just don't respect that vision of the universe. I don't respect a model of politics or of social policy or, or of anything else that is based on feelings instead of facts. I don't respect the point of view that uh, privilege is subjective grievance mongering and the indulgence of victimhood, conspiracy theories, fake history, and name calling and language policing. And these are the, not just the tools, but also the philosophies of the left. I don't respect them. I don't respect any of them. And there are people that, I've disag you know, that I disagree, I mean, you know, I, people that I, that I love and admire, like Christopher Hitchens, with, you know, I don't agree with him on anything. I wish he'd never written the book about God. Um, I think this is by far his worst book, um, second only to his terrible book about Mother Teresa. Um, there are people I, I admire hugely, I don't agree with on, on everything, but as, if you're asking me if, you know, if there's somebody really on the other side of the political divide who I think is great, um, I really don't. I mean, look at the quality that you have on the right. I mean, we joke about Ben, but um, you know, Ben is one of the sharpest minds in media in this country. He's an incredibly fucking smart guy. Really fucked it up with Trump, and now his career's gone. But, um, <laughs> but he's a very smart man. You know, we don't agree on everything. I th you know, but but where's the Ben Shapiro of the left? Where's the Milo of the left? Where's the um, you know where, where are any you know if you, the, the, the intellectual titans? Where's the you know the Thomas Sowell of the left? They don't have them. They just don't. Um, and that wasn't always the case. Um, but I can't honestly tell you, and I wish this were different, because we are at our best when we have strong adversaries, when we have opponents who are at the, the height of their powers, because it keeps you honest, keeps you on your toes, makes you the best that you can be. But I'm getting really lazy, because there <laughs> just aren't enough good people on the, on the left anymore. And there's a real problem with um, talent on the left. You know, I, f I see a lot of, of young Republican, you know, gifted writers, artists, musicians. Nobody will give them the time of day because they have the wrong politics. The left has the opposite problem. It has uh, odious, untalented people like Amy Schumer and Lena Dunham, who we are <laughs> required to love, though they have no redeeming qualities whatsoever and nothing interesting to say about anything. And the left has a real talent problem, so I, I'm, I'm waffling because I don't know. I can't answer your question. Thank you. Sorry. Hi, Milo. Thanks Hi. for coming. Thank so you. I heard you and Martin Shirley were considering buying 4chan. Um, <laughs> well, not together, but, but I think we've both expressed interest in it. So um, how do you feel about Shirley? And if you buy 4chan, are you going to place ads to monetize it? Because some, cons con uh, some users are concerned that advertisers will lead to censorship. Mm -hmm. Or do you merely plan on being 4chan's sugar daddy? <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem of being gay and getting to 30. You have to start becoming the sugar daddy. And just, so you're on dates and you notice that people are kind of pulling the same tricks you used to when the, bill, when the check arrives. They kind of go like this, you know. And it's like, fuck, I used to do that when I was thinner. Um, so <laughs> uh, I think the only way that it would work for me, I, as, as I think you've probably read, I do have somebody who's interested in funding it. Uh, funding my purchase of it. My, my philosophy of 4chan, which is a delicate, fragile uh, sort of uh, uh, subculture on the internet, which has very, very wonderful things and very, very terrible things. But you don't get the very wonderful things without the terrible things. It is, it is really, truly free speech central. The only way that it would work for me is if I could come to an agreed purchase price um, with him and that I had for the, at least the foreseeable future whatever it costs to run guaranteed so that I don't have to advertise on it at all. 
Thank you very much. Well, not a huge amount to run. I think it's. I think somebody estimated it was about six or seven thousand dollars a month. I mean, you know. Hi, Milo. Hi. Um, so my question is kind of looking forward past this election. If God forbid Trump doesn't win, and uh, we are forced to s succumb to the, the scourge that is globalism, what what do we do moving forward? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, this is why it's so important that you all fucking vote for him because you're done. You're done. What Hillary Clinton's going to do to to schools? You know, the, 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 to, Title IX is nothing compared to what's coming. What she's going to do to the police, pandering to Black Lives Matter, pandering to this organization that, that celebrates the death of police officers, the passes she gives them and, the, and that all of the people around her give them. It's disgusting. It's morally abhorrent to say nothing of the serious stuff that's going to happen in the Supreme Court. And we got, I know I gave a talk um, last night about ICANN, which is a much more technical... Um, subject, but the, the control of the internet that America has always kept so free, has always been so great, that is being handed off to Syria and Russia and China. I think if Trump doesn't win this election, you know, he's going to, look, I'm under no illusions. It's going to be a colorful White House. But if it, with Hillary Clinton in it, you don't have a country anymore. You don't really have America anymore because the erosion of, of of protections, the First and Second Amendment, in my view, um, will be irreversible. And what she'll do to the Supreme Court, which is, as I say, the only thing that matters, will be irreversible for generations. It's not just about what she can do in four years, it's about what they will do in 20. So I don't know, I, I, I quake. I quake to imagine a world in 20 years' time with a weak and divided and broken America with China and Russia on the rise. Um, I don't think you have any option but to elect them. Thank you. Hello. Hi, so my question is with so many uh, sources reporting that net immigration um, from Mexico is at zero or at least very close to zero, why is it that so many people, including Trump, are making such a big deal out of it? Well, the, the best explanation of this that I've heard is, is um, we do know, for instance, that the murders in some states are, you know, 30% of the murders are committed by illegal aliens. We do know that um, huge percentages of really very serious crimes are committed by people who don't have any right to be here. And I don't know that it's so much for Trump or for, for me a question of net migration. It's not really about numbers. It's about who you want in. Nobody is suggesting that you know, America should close its borders. I wouldn't advise that as a, a sort of observer from Europe, and I don't think anybody Isn't in America Isn't that what wants Trump's that. plan is with the wall, is to close that border? Well I, think, well, I think he wants to secure the border so that he can decide who America lets in and who it doesn't. If, if net migration from Mexico is zero, it might be in, the Amer in America's interest that it stays zero forever, because it might be better to get doctors and lawyers and accountants and teachers from Australia or from the UK or from Canada. What's happening at the moment is that pretty much anybody can sneak in if they're persistent enough, and you've got people um, committing horrendous crimes who just shouldn't be here at all. And you, for me, I, you know, I, I'm a fan of the Australian point system, which if you don't know what that means, it's, it's sort of um, basically Australia decides every year, like, what do we need, right? We're short on doctors. We've got tons of teachers, so we're not going to let teachers in. Um, we're short on doctors. Uh, we're short on, I don't know, plumbers even. Uh, so they just allocate that number of people, and they come in, they pay taxes, you know, all the rest of it. But the border is rock-solid secure. And nobody calls Australia racist. They just get in what the country needs. This, uh, this country, America, is the country that everybody wants to go to. It is the country everybody wants to get to. And you're sort of insulated from a lot of the worst migration because you're not contiguous with Africa or the Middle East. Um, and because if you, if you were, you'd, you'd be in the position Germany is in. But there's nothing wrong and nothing racist with saying, well, here's a country we have, we're short on this stuff, we've got too much of this stuff, and here's a bunch of crime, so here's what we're going to do to resolve that situation. For me, I don't think, you know, putting a halt to Muslim immigration, as a gay man, I'm quite comfortable with that. Building a wall in Mexico, you know, on the border with Mexico to make sure that anybody who comes in or goes out is supposed to be doing that and is entitled to do so doesn't strike me as a problem. And having a system where a country like America that everybody wants to get to, because it is the best country, gets to choose who it takes. I mean, you have a choice. You don't have, you're not under some moral obligation to provide a home and pay for the families of people who don't belong here, who just happen to share a border with you. 
That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You are under a moral obligation to look after the people who already live here. And if they need doctors, get them from wherever the best doctors are. And if the best doctors are in Mexico City, get them from there. They're probably not. But if they are, they're probably not, then take them from there. If, on the other hand, they're in Germany or the UK or Australia, take them from there. You have a choice. You're America. You don't just have to accept whatever bleeds over the border because you can't police your own uh, country properly. And that, as far as I read it, as I understand it, is all that Trump's proposing. And, and I, I don't know that net migration from Mexico is, is hugely relevant to that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. It's been a more serious talk than normal. Um, it's a very serious subject, and I was told that Vanderbilt was, uh, was one of those schools where people would like to hear something a bit meatier. Um, so thank you very much for, for listening to me. Um, if you want to come say hi afterwards, I think somebody will tell you when and where that's going to happen. Uh, but thank you very much for having me. Cheers.